In 20 minutes, Andy Crane is here with Children's BBC. Now Janice Long and friends offer a wealth of advice in Bazaar. is mounting because we have a special quiz program for you today. The contestants are there getting themselves sorted out. I'll tell you more about them later, but in the next half hour. How to fatten a slim budget. Fix that windblown fence. Play the golden oldie quiz. And sit down to keep fit. Now, have you ever wondered what you'd look like if you ate lots and lots of junk food and you sat there watching telly all of the time? This is a couch potato, but it needn't be like that. So we're going to play the hearty eater version of Telly Addicts, probably the only programme that Noel Edmonds isn't on. Now, meet the Whiteaways. They were grand finalists in the last series of Telly Addicts. And here we have Paul and Dave, hello. Right, and over here we have Mick and uh, Mum Jean. Good luck. Tell you what the prizes are later. They're very unusual. Paul and Dave, you're going to go first. Are you ready? Um, I'd like you to have a look at this clip. Now, I'm going to start by explaining the parts of the cooker to you. Yes. It's about. It's yes. Just here are the plates. This is for simmering and boiling. Thanks, Harry, and uh, thanks, Ken. That information is stored because I'm sure we haven't seen the last of the storms. Well, our financial expert, Alison Mitchell, is here once again and not dressed for finance. No dress for slimming, but it's not my figure I'm going to be slimming, but figures. I'm here to trim down a few wallets, keep spending habits in better shape. Right, leave it to it. And luckily, I've got Sally Ann to help me with the slimming side of it. It does seem to me there's a tremendous parallel to be drawn between what you tell people when you're trying to get them to slim and the sort of advice I give on budgeting. Well, let's put it to the test, Alison. We've got with us today the lovely members of the Bedford Slimming Magazine Club. Now, a lot of those would have been put on a 1,000-calorie-a-day diet because that's a safe level. But if they splurge the whole of that 1,000 calories on breakfast, say, or this could be even more than 1,000 calories, they're just not going to have enough left for the rest of the day. And the first rule is to spread your calories over the day so that you're satisfied. And you could say that's the first rule of money too. Because when you get your pay packet, normally what most people do is they say, well, we need a bit for the rent or the mortgage, we need a bit to pay the bills. And this is what they've got left over. Now that has to last them the whole week, month, however they're paid. You can't spend it all the first day or you're living on thin air for the rest of the week. So what's your next tip, Sally? Ruthlessly cut out the luxuries. No, 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 Jenny, remember? Sorry. A moment on the lips, a lifetime on the hips. You don't need those. Absolutely. You're right. And you don't necessarily need something like this. This is the sort of thing a lot of people impulse buy. They see it in the shop window and they think, ooh, I must have that. Ruins the budget. So don't impulse buy. Know what you're going to spend before you spend it. What other sort of advice would you give to people, Sally? Well, oh, you certainly wouldn't allow them to eat this, I'm I sure, at the slimmer. I certainly would, actually, because I do think treats are a very good idea on a diet, because it can be rather boring otherwise. I think an occasional night out the on the town, like Paul and Sue here, is a good idea. But there is a rule. You must make up for it the day before by cutting calories. You'd both do that, I hope. Absolutely, yes. Same rule for money. You've got to plan purchases. Save up for it in advance. You won't ruin your budget. And of course, if you're saving up putting money in the building site, there's an added bonus. A bit of interest will be in there. You'll have more than you expect when you go to get it out. Great. But what about actually keeping in control of things? Well, control for slimmers is, first of all, weighing in, as Cynthia's doing, and also control by writing down what you've eaten. So if you've had a bad day, you can check through and see what you've really been doing wrong. Now, if you spend something, always fill in your check stuff so you know exactly what it is, you know where you are, you know how much you've got left. That way you won't be pushed into an overdraft that you don't want. You'll have interest rates, you'll have bank charges. It'll cost you quite a lot of money. And, of course, check you check stubs against your bank statement. A lot of people don't do that. Even if they fill in the stubs, they never check it. So you could find that there were perhaps bank charges in there that you don't want. Or as I found once, money had been paid out of my account 
to a different Alison Mitchell. But what would you say was the main point, the one thing that you would say to slimmers to be very, very careful of? I think the thing is that if you do have a lapse, and we do from time to time, the thing to do is to not be too hard on yourself. Remember that if you have some fat days, <coughs> you must have some lean days. You can lapse with money too, of course. Any sort of impulse buy and whack goes the budget. A lot of people say, oh, I must just go out and spend now. That's my budgeting gone. It hasn't. You need to just tighten that belt a notch or two and you should be all right. And my own particular weakness is magazines. Now, some of these are two, three pounds each. So, in fact, I can save quite a lot by just not buying them for a month. But everybody's got their own weakness, pull up their own slack. And whether they have to do it for a few days or a few weeks depends really on how expensive their impulse buy was. Alex, a friend of mine went along to a slimming club and their slogan was, if you're dissatisfied, your fat is refunded. Your debts can be refunded just as easily too and they'll come back much bigger because interest rates are high at the moment. So the main point really is that people have got to keep control of their budget. And Alison, you've made your point. There is a parallel between controlling what we eat and uh, controlling our finances. Thank you very much indeed. Thanks to Sally Ann and thanks to the members of uh, the Bedford Slimming Club. Cheers. And there is help for you as well. There's a national debt line. There's a 24-hour answer phone and the number to call, it's just started, 021 359 8501. One. And of course, everything that's included in today's programme is in the really useful Bazaar Extra. This is it. All you do is send us an A4 envelope, 15p stamp, put your address on it, and I'll uh, give you our address at the end of the programme. Now, I bet you're wondering what's happening to the uh, winning Whiteaways, Paul and Dave. Well, they're having a great time because they're in the kitchen with Leslie. Well, Janice, we've been busy in the kitchen, haven't we? Yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> right, now, Paul, you're making the yep. Italian pasta soup, so let's take off the lid, see how far you've got. Put that down. So what have you got in here? Um, bacon, uh, garlic, and some celery, with a little bit of oil as well. Right, and you're vegetarian, yes, aren't you? Yes, uh, I wouldn't want the bacon. So the next thing you put in is the flour, All just right. a little bit of wholemeal flour going um, in there. What's that for? Well, it will just help thicken up the soup slightly, yeah. so we'll just add that. Now you want some tinned tomatoes going in. Just pour those in. Good stir like that. Lovely. And then your stock. And we've got some vegetable stock here. Um, but you don't need to use vegetable stock. You could use water because the soup will make its own stock as it cooks. Right. Great. Give it a good stir. Now the ingredient that's actually really going to thicken this soup is pasta. It's just yeah. dried pasta. We've got wholemeal pasta and green pasta and tomato pasta. Do you like your pasta? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Right, that's going to go in now. Pour that in. Great. And some dried herbs and a bay leaf. That can go in there. And we'll simmer that for about 20 minutes until okay. the pasta cooks. And if you take the lid off of this one here, yeah. this one's had its 20 minutes. <laughs> it's now ready for the last ingredients, which are some kidney beans, if you want to add those. And these are tin kidney beans, which have been drained just for quickness really yeah. and some runner beans and some french beans going in there and they're raw yeah. but you can use um, frozen ones if you wanted to or right. peas or sweet corn give it a good stir okay. great lid back on again and you cook that really for as long as you like I like my beans quite crisp so I'm yeah. just going to give it a few minutes right <laughs> On to you, Dave. Right, now you've been making the yep. bread. You should be good at this. Your brother's yeah, a baker. Brother's about you, yeah. Your brother's a baker. Baker, yeah. <laughs> right, okay. So you've made a bread dough using wholemeal flour, water, and a little bit of oil and some salt, which you just mixed up. And you rolled it out on the baking sheet, which is a bit <laughs> cheeky. It saves you actually lifting it onto the baking right. sheet, which is a, a good tip to have. Now, what oh, have yeah. you got here? You've got some uh, brewing onions. Spring onions and some parsley oh, so you just want to just pour it on there yeah just pour it on top of mm. the dough like that put it down yeah. and then just use your hands spread it on do you do much cooking <laughs> no, <can> you tell. <laughs> no, no, not at all. i think you're very good right okay now you want to take either end if you just fold it over yeah. like that great i hope your brother's watching yeah, this <laughs> <laughs> and then roll it up towards Yes, that's it. So it's just like two rolls together. And then you can take a knife and just split it down the centre. Can you just sprinkle that with some flour? And you want to get your oven nice and hot, so you light your oven before. Lovely. OK, if you want to bring that over to the oven now, I'll open the oven door for you. If I take out the one that's cooked, and you put in the one that's cooked like that, that will take about 20 minutes to cook. Okay. 